Hey guys, it's Brittany again, and this is part two of the wedding planning series. Um, if you have not watched my DIY wedding planning binder video, um, it's probably going to be pretty long, but if you haven't watched that video, definitely check it out. I'll put that on the info card for you guys. So today's video is going to be about choosing your wedding date and choosing your wedding venue. So I'm going to tell you guys how we, how Adrian and I chose our wedding date and our wedding venue and I'll try to give you guys some advice on how to do that. So with choosing our date, I knew that I did not want a summer or spring wedding. I just like the chill vibe of fall and Adrian, he also agreed with that. So um, I knew that we both didn't want a spring summer wedding. Also, we felt like spring and summer was too soon for us because we got married, we got engaged on August 18th and I don't think that gave us enough time to plan. We would either have to postpone our wedding to 2018, which is not a bad thing, but um, we wanted to get married in 2017, but not like at the beginning of 2017. Yeah, so after we decided the kind of the season that we wanted, we started to look at the different dates. When you are trying to choose your wedding date, choose first, I would say, think about the year that you want to get married in. Some people don't want to get married like the next year. They want to wait so they can space out their payments and everything, which is a great idea. So you can space out the payments and actually get the wedding that you've been dreaming about. So if you want a lavish kind of wedding or a wedding with all the bells and whistles, I would suggest that you have a longer engagement and that's if you don't have like the money to do it like six months to a year from now. But if you have the money to do that, you can get married whenever you want to. I mean, anybody can get married whenever they want to, but if you want a lavish, you know, very detailed and lavish wedding, but you're on a budget, you might want to have a longer engagement. Um, but if you are not the kind of person that wants like a super lavish, you know, traditional big wedding, then um, you you should probably obviously have a shorter engagement and uh, just make all the accommodations all the accommodations you would need to to be able to plan in such a short period of time. We got engaged in August 2016 and we started planning our wedding in November of 2016. How we came to our wedding date, which is November 12, 2017, we first would kind of like hear the different months and the dates together and see what sounded right to us. And then Adrian does hand lettering. So we wrote down all the dates in the fall that we like. That's how we came to our wedding date. So um, November 12th is on a Sunday. If you are thinking about like the day of the week to get married on, Saturdays are the most expensive because that's when most people get married. Fridays are cheaper than Sundays. And then if you get married like Monday through Thursday, it's gonna be even cheaper. So we decided to go for November 12th, which is a Sunday because we just thought it was different and um, it's less expensive. And what's also less expensive is the time of year we're getting married. If you get married in like the spring, summer months, those are like peak season for weddings and they're more expensive. So when we went to go look at, when I was looking at wedding venues and stuff on their websites, when you get married in, off, in the off season, which is I think it's October to March. It might be October to March. It's like a thousand dollars cheaper than to get married in peak season. So that that was also a motivation to get married in the fall instead of during peak season. So keep that in mind if you are if you are on a budget or if you just like that time of year, like it's more of an incentive to get married during that time. Yeah, we just felt very connected to that particular date. If you are planning way ahead of time, choosing your date is gonna be easier than somebody that chooses their date like six months before the wedding because you know, a lot of things get booked up. A lot of photographers and venues, they get booked up and everything. So we chose our date a year ahead of time. So our venue already had everything set up for us. And because we are getting married on a Sunday, they had more, um, they had that date open because it was on like a, a more unique day. You also want to consider 
the day that your period is gonna come on too because even like on the day and your honeymoon you don't want to have to be thinking about that so you might want to think about that when you're figuring out what date you want to um get married on obviously guys you don't have to worry about that but uh, i definitely wanted to say that about the women that are getting married moving on how we chose our wedding venue um we went to okay with my entire wedding i like i told you guys in the update video i i have used wedding wire as my app i have it on my phone and it has helped me it's helped me a lot at the beginning when we first got engaged i had the knot and wedding wire on my phone but right now i just have wedding wire and as you can see we have me and um adrian and i's uh engagement photo on there and then it has like a countdown we have 231 days six hours 12 minutes and 34 seconds left until the wedding so i've been on this website it's helped me choose everything it has a checklist for you guys it has like a budget sheet a thing where you can put all your guests in it but i use so far i've been using it to find all my vendors so they have like all the vendors on here you just click them and it'll give all the ratings for them and everything and it's very very helpful i wouldn't rush into anything without doing research on any vendor you decide to go with um i definitely knew that we both wanted a wedding that was not traditional as far as like having to be in a um in a church as i told you guys in the wedding planning update video i went to one of my friend's weddings like three years ago three years ago and he had his wedding in a art museum and i thought that was really offbeat and very cool um so we wanted to have our wedding in a location that was uh definitely different than what is more traditional okay so the first criteria was we wanted something a little bit more offbeat and different we wanted a place that could accommodate about 150 people we wanted a place that had a built-in a built-in day of wedding planning coordinator type thing because i'm not using a wedding planner throughout my wedding it's just me me and adrian so far and then but on the day of i know i am not going to be involved in let, telling everybody where they're supposed to be but with our wedding venue it's pretty much all inclusive so it comes with a wedding planning coordinator on that day to have everything in order which is very very helpful and then they have the fee built in the quoted price for the venue so that's really good we're having our wedding at the same location as our reception so um, they're together so it's one price and we knew we wanted a place where it came with the tables the linens and the chairs now I'm going to tell you guys um, a lot of venues won't cost that much but they won't come with the tables and the linens and the chairs and then you have to rent those separately through a different company and then it turns out to be just as expensive if you went to an all-inclusive wedding venue so hear me and hear me well when it comes to that part because so i would suggest to go with a place that offers more than just the building itself like where everything is factored in and written down in like the the quoted price and everything it'll save you a lot of time and you won't have to do as much you won't have to deal with as much vendors and everything like that so that was my biggest tidbit about uh finding your wedding venue also when we visited this one place in greenville it was so pretty and beautiful but the parking was terrible because it was in downtown greenville if you have 150 guests and they don't have a place like right next to the to the venue to park it's going to be very inconvenient and cause a lot of frustration for everybody that has to be there um and what if it's raining and they have to walk like i don't know two blocks to get to the wedding venue um i don't think that's very considerate so that's something you have to think about with your wedding venue i think that's about it as far as wedding venues go um just just go with something that is in your budget that suits your style and comes with everything that you might need to save you guys some time and a headache you know if i left anything out about choosing your date or choosing your wedding venue please let me know and i'll try to address it in the different video yeah and what other videos would you like would you guys like to see from this wedding series let me know that in the comment section and if you have any questions about my hair or my lipstick 
that will be in the description box so definitely check that out i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys